Welcome to part 4 of this Path of Exile series. And now I am guess I'm going to talk a little bit about skills. Skills are everything in this game. Um, this game is very... how do I put it? Well, if you look at the bottom right corner here, um, you can see that you don't have a lot of room for skills. You have your default attack, you have your middle mouse button and your right mouse button. Then you have five slots here for skills. That's it. That's all you get. So, you're gonna have to be picky and you're gonna have to probably more than likely spam skills. That's what this game sort of comes down to. Get one skill, and maybe two and really work on augmenting those with all kinds of things to make them better and you know be the best that they can be so how do you go about skills well let's start off with let's take a look at this one this is a aura it's basically a buff so let's go and look at it from the top it says aura Cold spell AoE. Those keywords at the top there are very important because those things will tell you what passives out of the passive passive tree will actually work on this skill or have an effect on this skill. So anything that increases your cold damage will work on this skill. Um, it's aura, so if you have any passives that would do something to your auras, that would work with it. If you have increased spell damage, I'm actually not sure about that one, but I think it will work on this one as well, because it counts as a spell. And AoE, um, I'm not quite sure how AoE ties into this one. Well, it's an AoE around you, so probably AoE radius will uh, do the trick. Level 8, well that's the level the skill is, not really interesting. Mana reserved, well, let me go outside and show you what that means. It's quite an important thing in this game. Dum -dum -dum -dum. Load, load, load. Um, okay, so, let's see, we're looking at added coal, or excuse me, hatred, right? Yes, hatred. Let's activate that. And now you can see that there's a gray part to my mana here. Mana pool. It says mana reserved 76. So, if you look back at the skill here, it says mana reserved 30%. Let's go back to the previous one. So, 30% of my maximum mana is reserved. Now, the reason they reserve it and not just take it away is because then you will still technically have the same amount of maximum mana. And since your mana regen is based on your maximum mana and a percentage of that, you can't take it off because then you would lower your resist as well. Or, excuse me, regen. Not resist. Wow. So, what this means is you're going to have to be picky as to what kind of auras you're going to run. Because if you run a 40%, a 30%, and another 40%, that's 120%. That won't work. You can't. There's no way to run three of those. You can run three of the 30% ones at the same time. So you have auras that have a percent based of mana consumption, and you have auras that have a fixed amount. Now this is important because the percent based will never go up. So you can always level up a percent based aura. So the hatred is 30%. If I get it, to, uh, you know, get enough experience in this skill, I can level it up, and it will still be 30%. Now, if I look at anger, for instance, it says mana reserved 68. It gives me a hard value. Every time I level up this gem, it's gonna give me more mana reserved. So that's bad. So with this one, you want to be careful with leveling it up. And once you get into stuff like Clarity, which gives you MP regen, it also um, reserves a big amount of mana. So you probably don't want to level that gem past level 3 for any use, because it's just going to get worthless, because you're going to put in so much MP that you can't use, that's you know put away for you. 
So be very careful in leveling up those kind of gems. So let me activate that one as well, you'll see. I now have 144 mana reserved and only 107 mana remaining. So although I become more powerful, it's also going to cost me an MP. So it's always going to be a balance between the two. And you're just going to have to try to figure out what works for you. If you have enough regen, you can do a lot more. If you don't have enough regen and your skills use a lot of mana, then you're going to have to wait for those auras. Get more mana pool, you know, percent mana in total. Um, get more armor with mana on it. There's multiple ways of getting it up, but you're going to have to do something about it at that point. Now, as for a regular skill, um, where is it? We have cleave, for instance. That's my main attack skill. It's uh, this. It's AoE. It's basically like this range around me, pretty much. And that one. That one. I have a 14% quality cleave, which gives me. I don't remember what it was. I think it's the 7% increased attack speed. Or I get some extra physical damage. I don't remember. Either way, getting quality on gems usually gives you some bonus stats and bonus um, stuff on it. Which is usually good. Um, on some of them it's not bad, it's just not useful. So it's not always needed to have a quality one. But in most cases to have a quality one is always better to, to not have a quality one. So keep your eye out for quality gems. They're worth a lot more if you sell them as well to other people. Um, so let's leave that out of this for now. Um, your skills are all in gems, so you're going to find your skills. You're going to get them for quests. You're going to trade them with other people. There's multiple ways of getting them. And what you're going to do with skills is you're going to sort of augment your skills with other support gems. You need to have a item like this that is fully linked. Those links between the slots is important, otherwise it will not work. They have to be linked. Now, if I have a skill in this one and this one, that doesn't matter. They're all linked, they'll all work on each other. doesn't matter where you put them in, as long as they're all linked together. So, I have my cleave here. I have added cold damage, so that will add cold damage to my hit. So, you can see here. My main hand does 23 to 49 cold damage. I also do 11 to 22 fire damage and 30 to 87 physical damage. Now my DPS is 370 with this skill because cleave works with both my main hand and my off hand. So the more elemental damage I get on all my gear, uh, let's see, I have anything right now. 15% um, increased elemental damage with weapons. That gives me a nice boost. And 2-4 to four elemental damage on this weapon helps as well. Now for level 35, which I'm not yet, I have some really, really nice weapons that will probably push my DPS to close to 500 in one smack. So this build skills extremely well with gear. The better your gear, the insanely higher your DPS will go. But anyways, back to this. I have weapon elemental damage on here. This means that I do 76% more weapon elemental damage. So every time I get elemental damage, it then gets multiplied by this skill and then goes into my attack skill twice for each hand. If it's a global elemental modifier, not just on one weapon. So I take any elemental extra damage goes through the extra passive there, that support gem, and then goes into the skill. I use blood magic, so instead of spending my MP, it will cost me HP to cast this skill. If you take a look down at my HP bar, you'll see it go down. And I can actually kill myself doing this. Now this character is still in a sort of awkward phase where he doesn't have enough regen or life leech to make it really a good build, but it's getting there. I'm just, like I said, slightly in the awkward stage right now where my damage isn't too great and my life leech isn't where it needs to be. So 
it functions, I don't die, but it's not great yet. And what else do I have on here? Well, that was it. So, in this case, that's everything that works with this particular skill right now. And if we look over here on the skill, we see a W, a B, and a C. So those letters represent the skills that you have attached to it. And you can also see it in here. Um, you see the added cold damage. The added fire damage comes from... Oh, let me turn off my auras. And immediately you'll see my fire damage goes down. My cold damage goes down, so those auras also tie into the skill. So it's another way to get extra damage into this particular skill. It's an elemental cleave that I've been working on for quite a while. So there's a lot of things you can do to make your skill stronger, and it depends on what skill you're using. Every skill, well, almost every skill, is completely different as to how you build it up. Um getting better weapons always helps I mean there's no doubt about it but finding the right uh, support skills with your skill is probably one of the most important things you can do so if you have for instance a projectile based skill um, you can then tie in greater multiple projectiles and lesser multiple projectiles to shoot a lot more of the same skill then you could put a fork on it so every time it hits something it splits off into two weaker projectiles but you know hits two more people after that um, if it's a electrical based attack lightning attack you can have a chain on it which makes it jump between people arc basically um, there's so many support skills and too many to cover in just one video so go take a look at the wiki um, I'll post a link below and just take a look at all the support skills that are out there and just start thinking about what you can do. I'm giving you a couple of examples here of just a couple of the possibilities, but there are loads and loads of possibilities with skills. Then there's one more skill that I haven't covered, skill type, excuse me, and that's a curse. Um, I don't have any curses on this character at the moment. Let's see if I have any more warehouse, I'm not sure. See no no. Oh, this is fork. This is the one I was talking about. So projectiles fork, but you do less damage per projectile. But it means that when I hit somebody, it splits off into two new projectiles. I have blind. Um, this is an interesting one because it doesn't cost you any extra mana. If you look at this one, it says mana cost multiplier 125 percent. This means that your skill, your main attack skill, will cost 125 percent of the original. So the more you tie into it. This one cost 170 extra, then 140 for that one. And blood magic is very expensive for 237. So that means my cleave, which normally cost like what is it, um, eight mana, now costs 44 mana. So, and in this case, it actually costs life because I have blood magic in there. But just shows you how quickly it can go up. Um. Add a lightning, frost ball, quick strike. No, I don't think I have a. No, don't have one in here. No. So, anyways, a curse is basically a debuff. You cast it on a character or on an area, its area of effect, and they get whatever the curse does. So, lower resist to a particular element or all kinds of things, it's just a debuff. And I guess that about wraps it up for a first overview of these skills. There's probably 10,000 more things you can do with skills and can go into more depth with skills. I mean, there's just so many options, so many combinations. Some work better than others. Um, the highest amount of links you can get in items is six. So think about the possibilities if you have six slots one of which is your skill and then five different support gems to add damage to it to shoot more of them at the same time to split up into multiple projectiles then to uh, jump between them if it's electrical there's just endless possibilities of what you can do